Hey friends, welcome back to Books and Cables. My name is Heidi and today I'm going to be taking you through the making of this sweater that I'm currently wearing, which is the Lawrenson sweater. I made this project in about five days a couple of weeks ago when I had a long weekend off of work and it is a fantastic project. If you're a beginner and you've never made a sweater before but you still want a very impressive product, as you will see, there are some very dramatic puff sleeves coming your way. So the yarn I used for this project is Manos del Uruguay in their Allegria base. And I held it double with Rowan Kid Sulkays to get this beautiful halo-y effect that make, and it makes it super soft and drapey because of the silk content. And it's very fuzzy, obviously, as well. I can't believe I've worn it for over two minutes because it is very hot outside and this is a very cozy sweater. I am not the best at picking seasonally appropriate clothing. I am a fall winter person for sure and usually in the summertime I just am I usually hibernate in the summer if that makes sense. I'm kind of the opposite of a bear. <laughs> um, anyway I can't really remember the colorway that I had used for these because it was so long ago that I bought this. I bought it for a completely different project that didn't end up working out and I am kind of on a kick of using up uh, whatever yarn I have rather than buying new ones, particularly as all mail is taking so long to arrive. and. And you know, I already have so much yarn and a lot of it is beautiful and I want it to have a purpose, have life. So, all right, one last detail I forgot to say at the top is this is a design by Lily Kate Makes. So you'll find the links to her Instagram down below and through that you'll be able to access the wherever else on the internet she exists to sell her patterns. All right, let's get into this project. We're starting at the top of the back. Here I cast on and completed the shoulder shaping. Totally forgot to show you how to do a German short row, but I'll show you later in the video. Basically, the purpose of the shoulder shaping is to allow the sweater to conform to the shape of your body. Since your shoulders are not straight across, they slope downward from your neck. If you skip the shaping, the sweater will try to fit by stretching the neck part upwards, so you'll lose some length lower in the sweater. The short row is exactly what it sounds like. You don't knit all of the stitches on your needle. You knit only part of the row and then you turn around and you knit back. And the result is you make this triangle shape on either side of your neck hole because one part now has more rows knitted than the other parts. Okay, so we're now on a bit of a boring stretch. I'm knitting straight back and forth in stocking net stitch until I get to the shaping on the arm side. And then I just do some increases to get to make that bit that curves in and around your armhole. So since we're on a boring bit, I'm gonna chat a little bit about the construction of this sweater. I know I said earlier that this was a beginner friendly project. I don't think I'm actually a very good judge of skill rating. It's been a long time since I've been new at knitting. And also I'm the kind of person who dives headfirst into any new hobby by taking on the most difficult thing I can immediately. So take that with a grain of salt. But I think this for an ambitious beginner would be fantastic because right away you're going to learn a bit about shaping a sweater and how to do a more fitted construction. It's knitted seamlessly from the top down with set in sleeve. What that means is you knit, you knit it from the neck down to the bottom with the armholes. You pick up the stitches at the shoulder for the front and you shape the neck hole and you knit to the bottom of the armholes. You join it together and start knitting in the round to the bottom of the sweater. Then you pick up stitches around the armhole. You increase it really fast to make that puff sleeve. Then you do some short row shaping to make a sleeve cap. And then you start knitting in the round again for the rest of the sleeves. Then you finish the whole sweater off by doing the neckband. So you do some ribbing there and then you fold it over and it makes this like beautiful folded neckband. So now that I say it like that, it does sound a little bit complicated for a beginner, 
But the part that makes this a good sweater for an ambitious beginner is that the gauge is pretty large and it uses worsted weight yarn. It's about 24 stitches for every four inches or six stitches for every inch. It means you don't have to knit as many stitches to finish the sweater compared to something that would use a lighter yarn and a smaller needle. If you're like me and you wanna dive straight into a project, that's great because you're forced to learn a lot of things very quickly and you're gonna be building some confidence to a whole world of more complicated sweater patterns for yourself after you finish this. If you're less adventurous, then I would suggest that you select a yoke construction or a raglan construction for your first sweater. Those kind of constructions though, don't lend itself to a well-fitted sweater because they're kind of relying on very basic geometrical shapes, whereas, um, so they're basically just a couple of circles put together. And when you learn how to do a set in, you can do a lot more with shaping and all of that. Not to say that there aren't well-fitted sweaters, they're just not as flexible as this kind of construction where you can really get it to conform to the shape of your body. Okay, so now that I've reached the bottom of my back armholes, I've taken all of those stitches and put them on a scrap piece of yarn and I cut my working yarn. And we'll come back to this after we do the front. So you'll see here, I'm picking up the stitches from the cast on edge for the front. You'll do both sides of the front separately in order to um, expand the neck hole a little bit so it's not tight around your throat. Um, you will also see that I'm doing short rows on these two separate pieces to make that sloped shoulder shape like we did on the back. Ah, here's where I showed you how to do a German short row. So you basically get to the point where you wanna turn around, you flip the whole project around, you take the working yarn and then you wrap it around until you flip the stitch upside down. So once you're finished, it looks a little bit like tank top straps. After finishing the front straps, I'm now casting on for the neck edge on the front. So when I cast on extra stitches in the middle of the project, my preferred method is a backwards loop cast on, mostly because it's the easiest, but there's some other methods you can use which are a little bit less messy. When I say messy, it's because you're literally making loops with yarn, so there's nothing securing them until you knit those stitches. So you have to be really careful to hold those loops tightly while you're knitting it, or you could accidentally stretch it out and it creates these big, loose, unattractive gaps in your knitting. All right, now we just get to coast for a little bit. I've now joined under the armholes and we're just knitting straight in the round with some textural details on the sides. I should note that here is where I made some modifications to the pattern. I find that many knitwear patterns, particularly the more basic ones, even if they're graded up to a larger plus size, they don't necessarily fit in the same way that the designer intended to fit with sm the smaller fit models that they use because it doesn't account for differences in cup size and the way that um, let's say if you have a larger belly and things like that. So I have quite a large difference between my bust measurement and my waist measurements. So the pattern calls for you to knit straight after joining in the round. For me, that would have resulted in a baggy sweater around my waist. So in order to get what seems to be the intended fit of the designer, which is a um, sort of hourglass shape, I've decided to add some waist shaping. Um, I did it very straightforwardly and I'll explain at the end of this section why I, I actually did it wrong now that I know better, but how I did it was I measured the distance between the armhole to the bottom of my bust. Based on the gauge, I had to knit around two and a half inches more before I started my waist shaping, or in other words, 16 rows more before. 
I start my waist shaping. Then to figure out how much waist shaping I needed to do, I needed to find the distance from the bottom of my bust to my natural waist. So that was 3.75 inches or 22 rows. Then I compared the bust circumference, so that's 48 inches to my natural waist circumference, which is around 42.5 inches. So it meant I had to decrease around five inches overall or 22.5 stitches. I rounded that up to 24 stitches decreased overall. Since I had 3.75 inches to make those decreases, it meant I had to decrease four stitches on every fourth row for a total of six times. Since doing this, I realized that this is not actually a very good methodology, even though it worked out fine since the material I use is quite stretchy. So I had the right idea in terms of doing the waist shaping. What was incorrect was that I did the waist shaping proportionally. I should have been actually working off of half measurements. So while my full bust is 48 inches, those 48 inches aren't distributed evenly on the front and the back of my body. So when I actually measured, it's 24 across my back and 27 across my front. So by doing the decreases proportionally, I was actually decreasing too much for my front and not enough for the back. Now the part that I know I've been waiting for this entire time, doing those big beautiful puff sleeves. I feel very Anne of Green Gables in these. Are there any kindred spirits out there? <laughs> The stitches have been picked up around the armhole and then knitted up to the top of the shoulder where I did rapid increases to make that dramatic puff. Now comes a really important shaping step, the sleeve cap. So this is another part where you're kind of departing from that beginner realm and learning how to shape things to conform to your body. A set-in sleeve, because on the arm side it curves around your body to your underarm, if you knit the sleeve straight out from it, it's going to result in an odd looking shape. So in order to fit the sleeve into that dip you created, you need to create an opposite shape, which is a bell-shaped sleeve. So traditionally set-in sleeves were done separately and then sewn in, and you would shape the sleeve by doing decreases to make that sort of round cap. But if we're using a seamless construction, you can do this by using the short row, which we talked about earlier as being a way of adding length to one part more than another part of a round or a row. So to shape the sleeve cap, you want the most rows at the center of your arm, and you're knitting back and forth and adding one stitch to each side until eventually you are knitting in the round again.
right one last tricky part before we're finished this project so when you pick up the stitches for the neckline you knit ribbing for double the length that you want your neck band to be and then the pattern calls for you to sew it down to the inside after you bind it off However, because I am lazy and I cannot ever locate a darning needle to sew in things, I am doing a knitted on bind off instead to save that extra step. I looked very carefully for the matching stitch where I picked it up on the neck edge and I put my needle through it, pulled the working yarn through the neck edge and through my live stitch. Then I bound off in the usual manner by inserting my left needle into the previous stitch I've done and then pulling it over the most recent stitch. So I did this all the way around the neck edge until everything was secured to the inside of the neck hole. And with that, we're finished. It's going to be a couple of months before I can maybe take proper photos of this particular finished object just because of how stinking hot it is right now. But I really like the sort of vintage inspired shape. This was an awesome piece to add to my wardrobe. Over on Instagram, I did a little bit of a call out to ask what kind of content everyone would be interested in seeing. So. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a comment down below. It is a little bit different of a format than I've done before, so let me know if you liked it. And let me know what kind of content you want to see me making going forward. Yeah, I'd love to hear all of that from you. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you again. Bye!